This is a HeadGum Podcast. I feel very confident. It's been eating at me, so I'm so, really glad you guys called. Well, um, you called us, to be uh, fair. The show is, the show is <laughs> we don't call people to find out if they have problems. You called us. Give her a break. I'm just, it's a lot of stress. Well, I just think in case this is for someone's first episode, but the it, premise is <laughs> the opposite. So let's lay that down. We call random people around the United States <laughs> and offer By the way, unasked you need, advice. Called, you need our help. And we call you and demand you tell us a such a better problem. premise of a podcast. Hello. Hey, how you doing? You've got Jake Johnson, Gary <laughs> Reynolds, and our guest today. Hey, I got hey. a rat. I got a rat in my yeah. house. Can I help you? Yeah, I no, got a we're rat. here to help you. Yeah, okay. All right, let us pitch on that. First of all, dress like cheese. And we are back with a really special. This is great. Yes. What a great guest. Very excited. Yes. Fit right in. Fit right in. I've been a fan of his, and I'm sure you have yeah. too, for a long time. Absolutely. Mr. Rain Wilson yep. joins the pod. He, as you'll see, he just comes in and he crushes it. Yep. And uh, he has a podcast that it, that will be out tomorrow called Soul Boom. You know, I mean, we talked to him for a while after. Well, why don't we do this? Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, we're going to just cut to Rain Wilson explaining his pod. Rain? I got a new podcast dropping in April 9th, Soul Boom, the podcast. It's uh, deep, meaningful, probing human discussions about life, messy human experience, psychology, spirituality, and um, I hope that you guys will listen. I love it. We what will we'll do is we will, our but we'll also, in the intro, intro we'll cut to yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, great. Hear that, so it's at the beginning of the show. Thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate and it. Rain, like, thank... scribe, subscribe. All the good Smash stuff. the so, like, we say. Smash the like, comment, <laughs> all that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Engage. You guys are on something so beautiful with what you're doing here, man. It's It was a pleasure to be here. This oh, dude, so thank fun. you thank so you much. It means a lot to me. Super, super cool. Boy, did he do that well. He was great at it. That was great. Well, so if you like what you heard, <laughs> check out Soul Boom yes. tomorrow. Yep. April 9th. April 9th. And I think that's it. Yeah. So really, uh, he's awesome. So he's enjoy awesome. this episode uh, a lot because we really enjoyed doing it. And uh, we have a Patreon. Check it out. And there's a really fun story that Gareth is going to drop on there. Yeah. About American Airlines and how I'm done with them and I hate them. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Uh, they have further ado. <laughs> uh, and then we need the headphones because that's where we hear them. Yep, on your uh, left oh. side right there. And how yeah, you doing, that would man? Help. I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, life is good. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Nice <laughs> to meet you. You too. Uh, Garf, you want to do our intro? Sure. How many times do you get mistaken for Andrew Santino? How often does that happen? That doesn't happen as much as I sit here and lament my career while looking at his and go, should be me. <laughs> should be me. But is, uh, is it the red hair, you think? Is why you think Santino. But it's, oh. No, but it's the, the, the face. face shape. Well, there's a lot. There's a little bit of vibe. Yeah. yeah. Just general animosity towards everybody. <laughs> I, I will say this is a sweeter San, This is a sweeter version. Andrew okay. Santino. Santino's okay. got a lot of bite. Yeah. Aww. Gareth Gareth is a sweet, he's a rounder edge. He's a sweeter guy. Okay. Uh, are we good, Kev? Hello, caller. Can you hear us? This is a bad start, by the way. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Seems good. Now that we have a giggle. Are you there, caller? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sure can. Welcome to We're Here to Help, America's number one podcast. Don't look it up. You are, let me tell you something. We haven't done a call together in a minute, but boy, are we jumping to the deep end. Because you not only have Jake, the Snake Johnson, Gareth Reynolds, you have our very special guest. You know him. You love him. Rain Wilson is in studio with us today. Hey. And we couldn't be more excited. Thanks, guys. I'm so excited. Yes. Yeah, appreciate you being here. So, I can't wait. I'm like, I love we're jumping right into the call. Yeah. We did. There's few. There's no warm-up swings. It's just right yeah, up to the plate. This better be good. It better be good. So, <laughs> Caller, what's your name? There we go. Hi, I'm Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Okay. And can we get your age roughly and where you're calling from? Yeah, I'm 41 and I'm in San Diego. Great city. Any I love thoughts? San Diego. There we go. Jake? Have I'm you been to San Balboa Park? It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I have been no, to Balboa Park. Yeah, it's the size of like Manhattan. Yeah. And it's got like 57 museums. It's yep. great. I have avoided the museums personally. But uh, okay, Adrian, <laughs> what the hell is going on? What can we help you with? 
So I dated a man for four years and then recently discovered online that he'd been cheating on me. So I confronted him and I ended it. But when I told my family and friends about it, uh, they felt really sad and, you know, it was kind of embarrassing. So they dug a little deeper and then we discovered online that he had been cheating, but that I was the other woman. Like he had a girlfriend the whole time. Oh, shit. So now... Yeah. You're the cheater. Now they're living. That's like a I didn't know I was the home that record. Yeah, twist. that's a good so, twist. <laughs> so it wait, was horrible. So Adrian. But now, so yes. You fi- you were dating a guy. Let's give him a name. His name is Scotty. Good. Okay. Oh, Scotty's good. Too. I'll be honest. I like Scotty. Can we go with Scotty? Scotty's great. Okay. So you yeah. were dating Scotty for four years mm-hmm. and then you found out that Scotty had a girlfriend. Your parents dug deeper and- you're the other woman? How so do you discover his, who's Scott, got it? Scotty's girlfriend existed a year or two before you? Or yes. his wife? Um, and, I think just a few months. The timeline is a little hazy, okay. but she definitely predated So me. he was double, dip, oh, double dipping, but okay. you were the second. But the reason yeah. you're the yeah. mistress is the other one was first. Also, what a great reveal for your parents to have to give you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Just be like, by the way. I mean, it wasn't just parents. It's like cousins, aunts, uncles. Ugh. Four All years is friend. real. Was yeah. Oh, yeah. That's... So your whole family yeah. stalked him online? How does that work? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> your cousins? Yeah, your when your parents uncles, are better at the internet nephews, than you. <laughs> my, my parents, my, 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 my grandparents all actually got together. found yeah. a secret Facebook account. He He's a real and, cheater. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at him. I found his private Instagram. <laughs> He's got two profiles, darling. <laughs> yeah, how did your family get to I was so silly to trust him. Can I hire your family to do some sleuthing? <laughs> Final, if we can do catfish with your family. Okay. <laughs> If this turns into a weird segment that Adrian's family becomes private investigators, <laughs> that's a TV show. It's a TV the show. You I'm not the producer. Hold on. Oh. Wait. I, uh, damn it. So you got cut out. I Sorry. really got iced out just because you two do better than me. Look at Andrew Santino. He's no, great. Oh, all, he's so no. funny. No. Damn it. He's so edgy. He's, so, <laughs> he's got the right I amount. Of, he's got the right amount of bites. Edgy ginger. Jesus. Edgy Christ. ginger. By the way, that's, that's a bakery. A, <laughs> and a cool podcast. <laughs> edgy ginger. <laughs> I mean, you get three edgy gingers doing a pod. Oh I'll my guess god! Boom, slam oh. dunk. <laughs> Rocket Money would be knocking out walls to oh, do ads on wow. that one. Edgy ginger. Betterhelp.com. <laughs> okay, all right, Adrian. <laughs> anyway, you're here on an edgy ginger. So, okay, so so your family sleuths. You realize you're the technically the other woman. <laughs> Keep going. So now that I'm out of the picture, because I wanted nothing to do with all that drama, obviously, sure. um, we see that they're living together, mm. and he's a real estate agent, and so is she. So mm. they're always posting like open houses that they're hosting together, um, like right. in my neighborhood, very Ooh. close to me. So you could see him so mm. easily. Show him, show up yes. naked. Oh Ooh. yeah. <laughs> It's like you're in my brain. So I want to go to one. You do. I feel like there's an opportunity for me to change the narrative from like, I got played and it was very embarrassing Uh. into like a funny story to like end this chapter of my life. Like, show up, do something and vanish. Mm. I feel like it would give me closure and it would just be really funny. So when we talk about him, he's not Scotty the loser. He's like, Scotty, that guy we played that funny joke on, I guess. Mm-hmm. So does she, um, does she know like, about, yeah. sorry, Adrian, does she know that Scotty was seeing you also for four years? No, she does not know uh, about uh, me. And well, I, okay, I hold on, Adrian, Adrian, we like, can go, Adrian, I, we can go two directions here. Mm-hmm. We can go sitcom. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, guess the, where my mind is already hold gone. On. <laughs> and the sitcom version is you go with like, some unthinkable, like, hunky Latina guy. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I just moved here. Like, now we are going to buy together? And he's like, you on the island in the kitchen. Yeah, and everything in front of him, <laughs> she, he's, like, spinning you and kissing you and mm-hmm. says, like, the best love I've ever made was to you. <laughs> but it's like, the other thing, which is an well, indie drama. There's, there's, another, there's another sitcom version. Which is? Which is she goes in disguise. Yeah. I don't know if there's, like, like, a reveal, but... It's she dresses yeah. like a grandmother, like in a gray wig. Yes. And then you mean in disguise, so Scotty doesn't even. <laughs> so know. So Scotty doesn't even know. See, my oh. sitcom one is Scotty knows, and she just slowly twists the knife while he sits there, stressed the fuck out as to whether oh. or not the Ooh. other shoe is yeah. going to drop. That's not a sitcom. So though. that's what I was going to say. I that's like... the indie drama. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched Edgy Ginger? <laughs> 
That's the is sort that of all we do. That's the sort of stories we have on that show. That's on YouTube. But, yes. It's it's no, I got picked up to Hulu. It's on Roku. No, it's not. It's not Roku. No, no, no. Roku passed. It's not Roku. No, we never even stop it. I think Edgy Ginger is on PlayStation Five. They're making content. They're still making. Yeah. No, no. It's just because it's done an eight-minute hunt. But so, Adrian, you've got, yeah. in terms of the show you want to make, because this idea of you going to an open house and mm-hmm. rubbing shit in his face, yeah. or right now we're in the pitch phase, everybody, yeah. oh, and yeah. we mm-hmm. made it very clear we are not responsible for what happens after. Yep. There's also a world where, girl code, <laughs> you mm-hmm. let her yes. know what's going on. Do you, yes. get, do you get a lot of these calls? I wonder, because I, I hear this a lot in advice columns, like- I was cheated on and found out he was also cheating, serial cheating, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Do we, Should I yeah, tell uh, him? Do, you, do you we have know? A, we mostly get lot. like, I put too much deodorant on yeah. and I like that my arms are slippery. And hey. we go like, now this is a good call. Another bowling <laughs> team has our name. What's our new one? But I think that this is an age old moral question. Like if the girl is... If he's a cheater, do I let the girl know or do yeah. I just step away? So to you, Rain, Truly. for a second. Yeah. A true question. If yeah. you were her in this spot, what's your gut instinct? All right, first of all, are you going to tell her the other woman? Do you want to do a bit? Where would you be here? I, I, don't, I don't think, Adrian, I don't think it ends well with you going to some open house. I, I don't see a storyline where it's like, yes, I got it. Slam dunk. Mm-hmm. I'm changing the narrative yeah. Yeah. by showing up right. at an open house. I, I'm, frankly, yes. that's just me. Mm-hmm. Yes. It sounds fun. I'd yes. love to, if, if you're going to do it, can we film it? Because yep. I would love <laughs> to. <laughs> I'd love to be there. Adrian, but by the way, Adrian, I'm not I'm not with Rain on that yet. Okay. But in terms of the, okay. this might not be a good idea. It still might be a good idea, but I want to see what he's cooking with um but but part two is is simply like just let her know you know uh and just how? like like in a letter your family email. just you, <laughs> the, not, your nine-year-old nephew yeah let your uncle stan he, he call her time <laughs> he two timed you <laughs> i said by the way i said nine <laughs> i don't know what yeah, are kids this what's is, a kid yeah so a nine-year-old you know I mean? and gareth goes <laughs> me to time you and poopy and baby <laughs> <laughs> baba goo goo oh that's so edgy ginger <laughs> It really is. Hey, we'll hey, be right back. <laughs> Edgy Ginger pitches a kid. He's 15. Goo goo yeah, gaga. He's a 21 year old guy. He still lives at home. He's like, hey, my dad died brown. You know what I mean? He's one of those baby boys. Hey. Hey. He's a little baby boy. We'll be right back. Uh, but I would, I, yeah, I would just write her and say, hey, I just want you to know that I was seeing him for four years while he was seeing you. He's still seeing you. You may not know about me. Just so you know who you're dealing with. Have a nice life. Right. Peace. Oof. But by the way, Adrian, that yeah. is a bomb drop. Because mm-hmm. you right. changing the narrative, you drop the bomb and let her know for four years he was also made. This is changing the narrative. Well, you kind of alluded right. to the idea a little bit that you want to turn, you want to kind of take the power back in the sense that you want to make this a story, right? That's, uh, so like, I'm not trying to get revenge. Right. Like, okay, respect. If they're happy, that's fine. I just sure. I don't want my story to be like how embarrassing, and that was the end of four years. Like, well, kind of. Wanted... You sort of said you want to go to the. Do you want to go to the open house and pull some shenanigans? Is that kind of what you're looking for? Yes, but I wasn't looking to like cause a scene or no. like ruin their business well, or well, make well, her talk us, upset. Talk us through how that looks to you. What yeah. what would go down? Paint us the picture. Like the first Give idea was all of the family stalkers would walk in like spaced out a few minutes apart, but not acknowledge that we know him just to make him sweat. Kind of like you were saying, like just to make him very uncomfortable, but okay. play it off. Like we're just looking at the house mm-hmm. and we don't know him. Okay. Um, but that felt kind of weird, boring and normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And weird. And, so but like, I need to weird energy, expert. weird energy when also, like the third yeah. cousin comes in and he's like, yeah. Hey, hey. And then he's like, are you guys all looking for a house? Yeah. And the answer is no. He's like 35 and he's like, what is this? A big home? <laughs> I don't know how to whip inside of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first idea is one by one family comes in and just weirds everybody out. Uh, what's another yeah. kind of thought you had, Adrian? Because by the way, I do think you're going in a gold mine here. And I, I think okay. I think there's a win in this. I think it's a really delicate game, though. Yes. Because I think yes. Rain is and right. That's why it, I call. Yes. Uh, you called the right place. The nerves before you pull it off. <laughs> yes. Too, are going to be. But what do you? Yeah. But you you can't fuck this up. 
And she's right. saying she doesn't, she's not doing it to blow up his spot. Mm-hmm. So this isn't going to be the ending and, and oh yeah, bitch, I was there too. Mic drop. You don't want that. Mm-hmm. You just want right. to go in between you and Scotty. He's really uncomfortable. You leave, get in the car and laugh your ass off. Yeah, exactly. Cause he feels like he got away with something, which yeah. obviously he did. So I kind of want him to know, like, you didn't get me, and, like, or you did. But and that was I just guess. a chapter, but the new chapter started, weirdo. Jake, that exactly. is some terrible advice. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst advice. You are asking <laughs> innocent San we'll Diego right and Adrian <laughs> to walk into a, into a mine shaft. Yeah, to, to, she's going to go in and just, like... Gloat a little bit, and we don't Scott is there, know. and you know what I'm doing, Rain. Brunhilda is the yeah. uh, the girlfriend. And... Yeah. But here's why. Here's why I'm saying it. Okay. <laughs> Th- but a- this is what Adrian's wanted. We're here no. to help Adrian, right? So if she called in and goes, "I got dumped. I don't know what to do," I'd go, "I don't know. Call somebody else." I'm just 41. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I pooped my diaper. My nanny's mean to I me. Went boom, boom. <laughs> but she's saying. They're real estate agents. I want to go and fuck with him. Well, I think when you, th- if you think about him, <laughs> if you think about, like, if you You're were him. You're not wrong, right? If you were him, <laughs> it, it is not great. But if you were him and she walked in, I mean, merely oh, walking in I would, would make you be like, what the fuck? So right there, right. you're kind of turning the heat up a little bit. And then after that, yes. it depends how much you really want to like kind of play yes. with your and kill. A- Adrian, I got to ask you a question because play with your kill is interesting. And that leads me to this. Here's my fear for you. If you're going in and the game is, is turning up the heat to make him uncomfortable. And we create some character for you of like a billionaire, you know, like. <laughs> oh, gee, Jake. You, <laughs> but you just, know, I, just it's good to range here because all I'm going to go is, that's great. Yeah, but just. <laughs> you're a billionaire. You got a pinky ring. <laughs> just go with me on this. If you're going in and he can't say, Adrian, what are you doing? So you walk in right. and you're like, this place is great. It could work wonderful in my portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you have? <laughs> so that his wife or his girlfriend is looking at him like, we got a real money bags here. Yeah. So we could play right. a version of this, but we <laughs> have to know 100% she doesn't know about you. Yeah. Because if they've had a talk and he said, <laughs> oh, it's a, I did uh, cheat. Oh, it's Adrian. And he goes like, yes, and I broke up with her because I'm more in love with you. And then you walk in and you go like, She's got hello, the main, my, name is, her neck. my name is Melinda blah, blah. And they <laughs> both go, you're a maniac. <laughs> no wonder you broke up with yeah, her. <laughs> this is a really she's weird insane. one. And she's walking around going. <laughs> it would look lovely in my portfolio. I might buy this and this and this. This would be great for my Picasso. Yeah. It would be really good to walk right in and say, I love it. I want to make an offer. Have a suitcase filled with cash. <laughs> Slam it on the kitchen table. That's very tastefully appointed. <laughs> Open it up. Let's see, I, I see don't know happens. if that's an earnest advice, but on this show, that's great. But, but so, Adrian, do we know for sure, as sure as you know, do you yeah. think she I'm knows certain you? She- she doesn't know you. She does not know me. She okay. does not know I exist. Okay. Great. So yeah. then here's what I recommend you do. I'm going to start building a thing yeah. here. I think okay. you reach out to her professionally and you okay. say, uh, let's give her a name. Broomhilda, right? Yep. Yeah. Broomhilda. 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 You say Broom. Broom. I'm you very say broom, interested I say broom. in. Broom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You say I'm very interested in the place. <laughs> broom. <laughs> Well, remember, Adrian's 41, so she's like, I'm I, very interested <laughs> in, the, in this house. Oh, at 40 that. turns it. Yeah, yeah. So at 40, you're a baby. Yeah, at 41, yeah, you're a that. grandma. At 39, you're like, what a big play. At 41, you're like, hey. Yeah. Uh, so this is basically Garrett's uh, way of saying like 40's his peak year. <laughs> Pretty much. You 40? said I look good. Jake, yeah. you said the best I've ever looked. You're going through a handsome stage. Thank you. So here's what I would do. I would reach out to her, and I would mm-hmm. start talking about your interest level on not only that pro- property but multiple properties and okay. start building the thing of you are a very serious buyer so that she says to Scotty I got a big fish on the hook and you're building up to this big day where you are going to see the place with your family a bunch of you are moving to town you might want to buy multiple places around you would like both of them there. You that, want to buy a compound. You want to buy a compound. You're, you're looking to purchase. <laughs> Has to be cash. And the day of, she's there waiting for you with Scotty and your whole family shows up. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Now, Adrian, where are you at with this? This could be a mistake. I this, could do that. 
That's possible. Wait, Rain, Rain had something. Don't do not do it, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian. I'm sorry, Adrian. Listen to me. Listen to me right now. Adrian, are you listening? Yes, yes walk, I'm listening. Walk away. Hang up the phone, Adrian. Walk away from Scotty. Walk away from all this toxic nonsense. Walk away from the world of real estate. And go do you live your best life. Listen to I me. Think, listen way, to me. Don't listen to him. Okay. Do this. <laughs> listen to me. He's on one shoulder. He's an angel. He's ready. Adrian, no. Adrian, do it. Do it. No. Do it. Do it. You got to have fun. No. Don't you want to have fun, Adrian? Don't listen to him. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> we're going to let it win go. Here. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> wow. I wanted more. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think great, the really devil and angel. Yeah. Great, I think, obviously, right. I think Rain's advice is very sound. Smart. Sound. But what would be what think? any friend would say. But, Garf, what but no thinking? fun. But, but the problem but is. We're going to end up somewhere. Here's the problem. We want the best advice. That's, that, and that's, but I think that's a great advice because I think at yes. the end of the day. Agreed. You know, that, look, I mean, what are you really going to get out of it? But here's what I'd pitch for the fun version. Yes. I would, I would show up just as you. I, I mean, mm-hmm. you don't, the, she doesn't know who you are. You don't need to do a big character. I think what you could, I mean, he's going to fucking lose, he's going to be sweating once he sees you there. And mm-hmm. there probably will be other people if you show up to an open house. So yeah. it could be a couple hours. And what I would do is I would just really like engage them and just be talking to them and oh. talk about how important it is to you that you only have one property. Because when you lock oh. in on a place, that commitment <laughs> is so important. Oh. And the idea of nice. playing multiple That's properties great. is kind of dangerous. And you don't want to get your hand right. in a cookie jar. Like lots of stuff like that. Ooh, that's just great. little insinuations. And also, how much respect you have from them as real estate agents because of their honesty. Yeah. And how you need, if you're going to get yeah, in business integrity. with yes. integrity so matters. important to you. And go, what everything I see about you guys, I see integrity. I see honesty. And I see I think, the kind of guy who wouldn't lie. And I think the more that you keep it like in that zone, That's maybe good, the safest Garth. it is as far as you feeling embarrassed or anything. Because if you are kind yeah. of just being like you, and you could come up with a number of ways to kind of just twist the knife. Ooh. But he will at some oh, point realize you're maybe just there to torture him. He'll die. And and I think that there's like least collateral so damage what, what, coming what your way. So what you could get to in that, which is uh, you're pushing him in a corner where he's going to have to react. I think Rain's advice of be careful here is that reaction might be really ugly. And that reaction right. might yeah, be real. It's a, This is a scary move. But, mm-hmm. Adrian, if you pull it off, and I would try to make sure it's at a busy time when you're doing this where there's a lot of other customers. If you right. go and it's empty... Take Rain's advice, yeah. turn the fuck around. But if it's like For peak sure. time- And she's got to be there too. She's got to be there, yes, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you can get them and have other customers around and you go on a little speech about one property, yeah. the value of it, integrity, <laughs> and then at a certain point go like, well, Scotty, you're a real estate agent. What do you think of all this? Yeah, and you have him even... go to you. <laughs> I think, you know, I would- if I were to do my life over, I would have bought one property yeah. and been like, honest well, with I the other properties. I had two properties at one point. I never felt like I was servicing the one properly, yes. and I didn't even I didn't even tell my family and I if, had two and properties. And if there's a way he could apologize while using the property stuff yeah. or not, whatever you do, this could be a win. Adrian, what are you thinking about this? Are we anywhere near a zone you like? Yes, that zone feels way more comfortable than like pretending to be someone that I'm not because Okay. I'm really non-confrontational anyway. Like he would be surprised for me to do this at all because I usually like I would take Rain's advice. Like I'm yes. done. I'm moving on. Like I wouldn't give it a second thought. Yeah. But it just seems like a funny thing, like an opportunity. And right? it's been like, eaten at you. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Like I if think you I would pull just, like, this off, Adrian. Yes. If you pull this off. I am going to buy your life rights and turn it into a movie. <laughs> I'm afraid uh, Edgy Ginger Productions already is pitching you already to have Roku. A thing. Okay. Well, we have a. Adrian, we have a, I have an what, overall with Adrian, Roku. Adrian, when this gets legal, don't it's go over with $2, Edgy $2, Ginger <laughs> Productions. Go with Rain's company. What are you talking about? 100 We both have done some great yeah. stuff in this <laughs> television space. Okay, first pitch. Everybody's a baby, regardless of age. Pass. Uh, Everybody passes. All right. Well, it's, uh, by the way, when I it's said look first who's pitch, talking for. <laughs> So oh that's the only pitch I had prepared to be quite honest. I don't know why I said first pitch. <laughs> so Adrian, you're thinking yeah. of playing this game where you're going to go in and try to get into a conversation about integrity, one property and, and all of that. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Do yeah, you that want, feels really good. Do you want to practice? Mm. Yes. 
Uh, would you like to be the husband, Rain? Do you have any interest in being that? And if be not, Scotty, Scotty, yeah. yeah, I'll be Scotty. Okay, and then obviously we know you're going to be what? Brune Handel. What's her name? Brunilda. Brunilda. So you're <laughs> really yes. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Ready? So you Adrian... never saw the opera version of Bugs Bunny when he's like, "Oh, Brunilda, you are so lovely." Yeah. <laughs> no, and that doesn't ring any bells. It brain. rings bells now when yeah. you do the voice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um. Hey, Adrian, you just mm-hmm. walked into the house. Okay. I think it's a great area over here, Scotty, where you can put a lot of their furniture can go in this room. What do you think? Why is your voice so low? I am still getting over that horrible, horrible cold. Brunhilda, <coughs> you sound- oh, that's better. Okay. Oh, now you go. sound- Thank Hello. you. Sorry wow. that happened. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that the presentation is great. Get, just bring some more cut flowers into the that's uh, a good, oh, into the someone. foyer. Hello, oh. welcome hello, to the welcome. Property. Oh my! Hi, how are you, Scotty? <laughs> hold great. on, how are you? Oh. <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, are you okay? Hold on, right? I've forgotten how to act. Say, it's been a while. Oh my God! <laughs> There's no premise. You have to hide it. Are you it. directing it? You have to hide it. Okay, okay. Any notes oh, over here? my God. It's my, a podcast. Yeah. My How am I going to- Who I People are listening. On. People are listening. Oh, it's right. a podcast. It's what am I going to do? Right. Son of a bitch. You're right. It's an old- Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm conflicted. Uh, yes. <laughs> we should I'm have having... sound effect. We should have a pair of shoes with some taps on it. If I'm going to go over we, here for a moment. We should actually get a little box of sound. Radio play. Ding, ding. So you're not- Almost done. Yeah, you're walking into the shop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the door's open. <laughs> okay. All right. So Adrian, back to one. A- Adrian, clop, you're clop, taking clop, over, clop, right? Clop, clop. <laughs> she rode her horse to the open yeah. house. That's right. I thought it was an open horse. Edgy Ginger will be right back. <laughs> All right, here we go. Adrian, you just walked in. You see Scotty. And Pernhilda. Okay. Less her. She's also there and important. <laughs> Can't get rid of her. Just say action. Asshole. Action. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I, I think this whole space is going to be great for whoever pulls the trigger on this one, Scotty. It's a keeper. Absolutely. Yeah. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing. You look unbelievable. I love this bow tie. I love your breasts. Thank you so much. Shh, not right now. Oh, good. These someone people are eating the pastries. Oh, a new look. A new a new person's come to the open house. Hi, welcome. Thanks for Hello, coming. Hello. I. Well. <laughs> I'm Hi, Brunilda. Thank you. This, this is Scotty. House he... is so lovely. Hi, I'm Adrian. This is a lovely house. Adrian, I love you. that name. Don't you love that name, Scooter? Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, sorry. Sometimes I call him um, Scooter and he doesn't like that. Yes, I do. I do very much. Um, so if you have any questions, Scotty and I are both trying to sell the property. It's a three bedroom, two bath. How two do we story. get you to shut up, Garrett? <laughs> is that a cut? <laughs> I mean, my God. I'm laying the foundation. Are you the guest or are you the caller? I'm late. Scotty, a lot's going on inside of okay. Scotty. Remember, the point is Adrian's going to practice. Soon we're going to hear about the bat. You well, gotta- the, the upstairs has tile, but let Someone me tell you about my Someone has to lay the hood. soil for the planters. The soil's not the novel. The soil is so imp- All right, here we go. Back to one? Yes. Okay. I think the That's low That's so sad are- that your wife's a mute. <laughs> I think this is it. No, please. Uh, it's so sad that she got her tongue cut off in the war. Help yourself Scotty. to some of the vegetables. Oh, Scotty. Well, look, someone else is coming in, Scotty. I oh, like hi. Way, welcome. Yeah. Oh, look at that mold- that molding. Hi. Look at Kat. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> Having a giggle. We love to giggle, don't Shut we? Shut up! <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. I'm also it, looking at the place. Some of these, yeah, you're. I don't My know. name is Vinny. Hey, hey Vinny. 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 Listen, we're dealing uh, with Vinny. this, this new person. We talked to you earlier, Vinny, but our ears actually heard from our discussion earlier about the Ottoman space. Um, so, what, what's your name? Hi, I'm, to the I'm really house. interested in, in this house, except for that loud neighbor that just yelled, Vinny, to yeah. shut up. At the Sorry, house, but, that was me. Uh, He's a nerd. I, think I think Vinny's putting really, in an offer. Yeah. Yeah. You're a great investment. I'm really looking forward to. Purchasing one property and spending some time, like making sure it's exactly how I want it. And okay. But mm-hmm. like I'd considered maybe owning two properties at one time, but it seems like it would be best if I focus uh-huh. my attention uh-huh. one at yeah. a time. That's a conflict. Instead of Good spreading choice. myself kind of grid. Yeah. Okay. And I was really happy to see how organized and beautiful this open house is. You mm-hmm. two clearly have a lot of integrity and mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. really. Effective. People, so I'm really looking forward to checking out the house and 
learning more about it. Look, are you interested or not? Are you going to make an offer or what? <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> sorry. I'm Daddy, sorry. I just. A- Adrian, I got to say. Vinny? That was. Yeah, this is Vinny. <laughs> I got to say. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Vinny. Vinny. Vinny meet Adrian. Vinny. <laughs> You're a Maybe you guys woman. go yeah. in together. Now I got to tell you, I've also been dating that lady right there. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, no. oh, You're dating Brunhilde. <laughs> 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 what the hell? Poof, poof, poof. <laughs> Local <laughs> pass. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> Here's what I'll say, Adrian. Here's what I'll say. Our next caller is on, mm-hmm. and Kevin is pushing us. But I actually okay. thought you did a great job. Great yeah. job, Adrian. And I think if you okay. do it like that, you're in kind of a money zone. Just have in yeah. the back of your head three responses yes. for how it could go. Because if it goes sideways on you and he calls you out, you, this story yeah. can't end with you go, I did this premise, and then he said, like, what are you doing here? Like, you were right. a blank to me, and then you get nervous and leave crying. So yeah. just play right. the scenario out so that you know, Matt, you don't want to be a thing where three weeks, you call us back in a month, and you go, <laughs> I did this thing, but now I want to go back again. You need the comebacks right. there. I would also say, you know, make sure you want to do it. Yes. And if you do, I would do the first encounter lay the foundation, and then go do a walk around so he's shitting his pants for 15 minutes and then come back and kind of right. cap it. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's it, a good it call. sounds good. And you've got to update us. And We're, are you happy. going, do you think you're going to actually do this? I feel very confident. It's been eating at me. So I'm so, really glad you guys called. Well, um, you called us, to be uh, fair. The show is, the show is <laughs> we don't call people to find out if they have problems. You called us. Give her a break. I'm just, it's a lot of stress. Well, I just think in case this is first, someone's first episode, well, the it, premise is <laughs> the opposite. So let's lay that down. We call random people around the United States <laughs> and offer By the way, unasked you need, advice. Called, you need our help. That's and we call you and demand you tell us Such a better problem. premise of a podcast. Hello. Hey, how you doing? You've got Jake Johnson, Garrett Reynolds, and our guest today. Uh, I got hey. a rat. I got a rat in my yeah. house. Can I help you? Yeah, I no, got a we're rat. here to help you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let us pitch on that. First of all, dress like cheese. Adrian, let us know what happens, please. <laughs> Thank you, Rain. I will keep you updated. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your help. All right. Thanks, Rain. Appreciate it. This episode is brought to you by Greenlight. That's right, Jake. When you're a parent, as you are, yep. uh, you'll know you'll have your fair share of big talks with your kids. I've offered to do a number of those with your kids. You've always rejected them. One of those big talks uh, should involve money, and Greenlight can help with that. So Greenlight is a debit card and a money app made for families. You can send your kids instant money, transfer, get real-time notifications, spending, all that. Um, it's a way to customize your family's needs and connect them with the allowance you know, to this reward actually your kids just for a job ha- done well. This actually just happened. Uh, my daughter lost another tooth oh boy. and wanted a raise. What? She said, I think I should get a little bit more for this tooth. And I go, you're asking for a raise? And she goes, I think so. And I go, no, you don't get a raise for losing a tooth. But it made me think of... I want to go back to this idea of you have a credit card, you have jobs, yes. the jobs lead to this money yes. as opposed to gift cards. And so I like Greenlight. She's such a, th- that is your daughter. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent being able to be like, I Always. deserve a raise. Um, so yes. Yeah, so, so this is a great way to sort of build the financial literacy Smart. of your children. Millions of parents and kids use Greenlight and learn how to make it responsible uh, financial choice. So should we bring in Gil or f- whatever? whatever? Yeah, we don't need him. Okay. So stop. Putting off, hey, so stop putting off the money talk and start putting your kids on the right path. Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash Gil sent me. Boy, that's going to hurt him. That's <laughs> greenlight.com slash Gil sent me. Oh, no, bring for them free. out. Well, I th- oh, well you, oh, you think just because you're using the promo code, I got to come out? That's not how this works, Jake. I, am, I in or, am I in or am I out? You're in, baby. Sign up for the Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash Gil sent me. That's right, Gil. G-I-L. Don't forget about me. I don't live in the basement. That's greenlight.com slash Gil sent me to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash Gil sent me. And I'll tell you what. Sometimes it feels like See I'm See you, not, Gil. Okay. We're done with you. Well, I have a... I, <laughs> Next one. I have a whole thing. This episode is brought to you by... Squarespace. That's right, Jake. Look, we love Squarespace. Uh, we obviously, use Squarespace. I use Squarespace for everything. Every Our website, show also did. We sh- built one for the party boys. That wigs and suits. That's, <laughs> that's right. We lit Caitlin and Kevin. 
Kevin, how long did it take to make that website? Super fast. Caitlin knocked it out in like a half hour. Yes. She posted about it. She made it really fast, and it's a great website, and she and said it was super easy. Yes. So look, Squarespace has, a, like we said, it's a great place to build your website. It's very easy, but it's also a great place to sell content, sell exclusive content on your site by adding a paywall, sell memberships, uh, files to your customers that they can download, PDFs, music. It's a great place to upload your video collection, organize your video library, showcase your content, on a beautiful video page. Uh, you can sell your video library by adding a paywall to your content. There's tons of stuff. But listen, you know who we bring in the closer. So listen, do me a favor. Go to squarespace.com slash Gil sent me to start your website or use any of these features today. You can get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash Gil sent me. That's www.squarespace.com slash Gil sent me to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now go for it, everybody. It's Gil Buchanan. Hello. Hi there. Welcome to We're Here to Help. Uh, can we get your name and your age and where you're calling from? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Julia. Um, I'm 25 years old and I'm com calling from London in the UK. Whoa, London. Well, Whoa. I will say you've got a real special one. You know Jake Johnson, host of the show, right? Yes, He's absolutely. Here. You know me, <laughs> Gareth, not Andrew Santino. And we have a very special guest, a hell of a problem solver, I'll say, right? based yes. on the previous track. Okay. Big start, big start. Uh, the great Rain Wilson is joining us. So you have a three-hander of two killers in yep. Gareth. Yep. Um, so you said <laughs> your name's kill, Juliet? Two killers You've got an yeah. That's another yes. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> two killers in Gareth. <laughs> I'm on a word count. <laughs> <laughs> You're too old. I apologize. Um, okay, Juliet. So why don't you tell us what's going on, and we'll we'll try to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is regarding my boss. Okay. Um, and a little bit of context. I sit right next to her in this open plan office. Okay. Um, and I have two main problems and one question. Are so, you from America and you live in London? You've got no, a little bit um, of like a Madonna you've accent. Got the Madonna. Where it's like it's kind of like American, but I'm putting on a faux English yeah. thing. What's going on? Yeah, how authentic is this? You grow and up? Is this the problem? Did you live there since um, you were like 13 or something? Because it's you're you're transatlantic right now. If it's under two years, it's fake. <laughs> um, I'm actually from France and Scotland, but I oh, grew up Christ. abroad. Okay. And I went to international schools, so that's that explains. Oh, my okay. So it's you're vaguely legit. international. I get it. It's kind of James Bond yeah. villain. You're legit. Yep. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have a boss. You sit next to in an open plan office. Yeah. Okay. Keep um, going. So my first problem is that she goes into way too much detail about her ailments, her bowel movements, oh, well. and mm. her complaints. Like she talks about exploding cysts and her boils. Mm. What the fuck? And usually while I'm eating. Mm. What? Um, so, for example, I went out for a little like midday treat. Uh, I went to Pratt, grabbed a little chocolate mousse. Mm. I don't think I need to explain where this is going. <laughs> um, so, very uncomfortable. Wait, you're eating chocolate mousse. She's talking about diarrhea while you're yeah. eating. Oh, yeah, but on yeah. purpose, is that pointed? Juliet, is oh. this a made up problem? Because this sounds. No. I was scared you were going to think that it's a made-up problem, but genuinely- You I were feel eating like chocolate mousse, and she was like, I took the runniest shit the other day. Yeah. She said liquid shit. She was like, oh, yeah, I, I, you're probably wondering why I didn't come into the office yesterday. I was like, oh, I was scared I was going to have liquid shits on the tube. I'm like, I'm okay. eating my chocolate mousse. <laughs> By the way, and this is a side thing, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Her backstory is where all my accents come from. No, don't, yeah, don't drag I always her down get, to your I level. always get- Made Jake. fun of for being bad at accents. Because you're yeah. bad at But I went to international no, school. Didn't. No, you're so from Chicago. I'm all you're a weird guy no, from Chicago. No, I'm Australia. Like, no, you're for not. For example, check this out, Rain. No, don't. Like, I'm from Down Under and I love England. Now you're going, where's that guy from? Yeah. Where's he from? Yeah. I went to international school. Oh, by <laughs> I the lived way, in France. This call I lived in Australia. I lived in England. I lived in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere you could think yeah. of, I no. lived. And that's why my yes. accent is everything. No. Oh, I get that. No. <laughs> All right. So, not, sorry, Julia. And nobody should. And so, Julia. Should I, what, you had two problems and one question. Yes. Keep going. Yes. Um, so, my second problem is that she doesn't work. Um, she watches What's shows all day, which honestly, I wouldn't have any problem with. What, what line of work is this? What are you What are you guys doing in that open plan office? Um, so it's a property management company based in central London around Oxford Circus. Oh, um, and I love the circus. Of, yeah. Same. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's, <so> it's, 
Um, and she's the head of health and safety. Oh, Jesus. She's talking about watery tube okay. shit. So, so and draining okay. cysts. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> we have, I think we have this setup. You work next draining to a woman cysts. who uh, grosses you out. If we don't know, is she, do you think she's doing it on purpose, Juliet, or you think she's just socially weird? I think she might just be socially weird, but I think uh, the worst part is the the shows that she watches are like shameless and sons of anarchy. So, anytime I look over at her screen, all I see are like, <laughs> asses or like giant dildos and i'm just like i'm trying to get on with my work <laughs> is she, this is your boss okay. yeah she's how, one of two bosses that how old I have. is she she's turning 50 this year Jesus yeah Christ. so this is an interesting setup it's going to be really hard to pitch on it so what is the problem i think you have to yeah. kill her yeah am i crazy i think you have to die i think that's the only way out <laughs> i really well, don't see any other avenue. yeah your boss who sits next to you watches inappropriate shows with nudity at work and yeah. talks about her health issues and it's very gross is your yeah. question what do i do now or is there something specific how do i fundamentally fix this woman <laughs> yeah juliet here's my first pitch yeah. uh, you gotta outgross the gross i i thought okay. that i wow. worry okay. i worry yeah that she's gonna be like i have a, sh a diarrhea partner no, I don't think that. I think it's like multiplication. It's like you know, blank times blank will equal like. Wait till I, wait till the boss is eating. Yes, and come in and like and, I took a shit. It was so big, I tore my taint. Yeah. <laughs> and and may, blood was running down direct, my leg. Direct eye contact. Drinking, yeah, yes, yeah. With, when she's without drinking, smiling, like a beet juice or something and, like and that. And then if she, the but I would do it. This is actually. It sounds like we're making a joke, but I'm actually now being serious. <laughs> I was just <laughs> pitching at the beginning. Here's what I would do. I wouldn't lead out with this. The next time she does it to you, you're at work and she goes like, oh, you wouldn't believe I had the runniest diarrhea. Look at her with direct eye contact and go like, all right, it seems like an odd thing to say, no? And then she'll go like, oh, sorry. And you go, no, all good. Then when she starts eating, you go like, I took a shit this morning and yeah. it ripped my <laughs> asshole open. And when she looks at you, whenever she goes to drink or eat, you're doubling down. <laughs> if on her screen is that, literally go on Pornhub and open it up you and can. paste it to her, or whatever it is. And she'll go like watching Shameless with an asshole. And then you have like- <laughs> Something ten, worse. Something right? worse. And you just point it at her. Yeah. And then she'll like look at your screen and you look at her screen. And you're basically, this is a advice it's called- It's like a gross off. A mm -hmm. gross off. Yeah. And you keep going. And if she heightens it, you are now playing chicken. Ugh. You guys are two semis on the highway. You have to go because at the we last second- You can't play chicken with a goat. She, it might be, it might be hard. I like yeah. it. Is that a saying? Well, like, did the you just make that all. up? Yeah. You can't play chicken with a goat? Yeah. Is that a thing? No. Okay. No, no it most works. of the things That's I say, it works. Well, yeah. It's go. pretty good. It works. Because it's like a chicken and a goat, like barnyard animals, but then the goat yes. is, you but, can't do it with the greatest and, of all time. And it stopped me because I, when he said, you can't do it with a goat, I went like, he's right. <laughs> well, because <laughs> I had two semis. I thought I was about to win. <laughs> the worry, but you can't play chicken the, with a goat. The worry is that, you know, she's going to be sending you like, Look at this bowel movement but, video. But then you have to go back. Which is going to be tough. That's right. I oh, think... you think it might just get in a league. Hey, Juliet, if you fought fire with fire here, you think you could win? I, I think so. I think I could outgross her. Yeah. It, uh, with the last call, we did a little role playing. I want to do a little role, role playing right now. Okay, so okay. I'm the boss. <clears throat> uh, let's say her name is Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. And you are going to try and outgross her, okay? I'm going to oh, need all of your improvisational great, skills. Great. Um, okay. I'm going to need you to use kind of like the French precision and the Scottish okay. kind of like gutsiness and, you know, bring bring your whole uh, grotesquity to bear on this conversation. So I'm Vanessa and action. Oh, Juliet. Uh, just the other day, I drained a cyst. You wouldn't believe what was at the center of it. It was a it was a writhing little worm. It was a worm in the pus of my cyst, and I was I was like, oh, I better capture it. But then it it fell down into my pubic hair and was writhing around as I was trying. What are you What are you eating, darling? What are you eating right now? Do you know what? That reminds me of when I had explosive diarrhea over the weekend. So I had some really bad food poisoning and it was like an open tap from both ends, like just like a nonstop stream. Oh, it, was, oh. it was really incredible. Oh, do you mind? I'm trying to eat my <laughs> pasta primavera. Oh, no, I mean, oh, exactly. I had pasta and it came out in full chunks. Oh, and I oh. 
type it. <laughs> I kind of pretty good. It. I will say good. the role I, play helps. She's yeah, but good. also Juliet, because what well, you might end <laughs> yeah. up is just madness. Because if you're she, good. If Juliet comes back and then goes like, "Well, the other day I vomited big chunks that look like cheese," and you go. You don't say. Have you ever <laughs> eaten your cheesy vomit? I know I do. Then you're getting into a world where your work has become the funniest place on earth. I, okay, I think this is, I really think that, that really helped sell me because. We're in 100% agreement. I, I, right. think, I think worst case scenario, you're at least finding some fun in the idea that you're going to try to win. Yes. And you might not, and she might just keep coming at you. But, but Julia's you've got, a shooter. Yeah, you've got good jazz skills. You just did that with Rain, and yeah. you're great. I mean, you yeah. could do. I think you would yes. crush it. Yes. The office. Yes. I mean, you would kill this woman. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna try it. I, I feel like you guys have given me a really good. Test. But you can't break. I, you can't laugh. You got to practice more. Yeah, 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 I would yeah. come up with a list too of things so that you're ready to go. You what go are, and cocked and loaded. Do you know Benedict Cumberbatch? Yes. Because well, I feel like he'd be a good person to work with on this. Get him on he board. He do some coaching. Can we lock him in, Kevin? Yes. <laughs> Are we close to that? So, Julia, do you think this is something you're going to actually try next time your boss does this? I think I've reached the point where I just can't take it anymore. Okay. Um, so I think I might actually try it. Oh. How about this, too? Go ahead. Maybe on YouTube, get one of those. I, I one time in a hotel watched Dr. Pimple Popper, and I was yes. like, I'm interested in this. I was probably oh, sticking yeah, around for six minutes before I was like, I can't do this yeah. anymore. You put on, like, the worst pimple popping video. Yeah, theater. have that on your screen just going not wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So do you think you would also have some backup on the uh, on a screen and then have a few gross stories, and once she starts... Do you think you're going to just say game time and let's go for this? I I genuinely think so. So then, um, Juliet, yeah. I need to ask you a favor now. Okay. And this mm -hmm. isn't hard. You have to have your phone ready. You record it. And yeah. hit voice notes yeah. and record please, please, this back please. and forth. Because if we got audio It'll of you great. and this woman having a gross off at work, oh my that's God. good joy. I, it would really, I think for everybody. <laughs> Not just us, but you too. I think it would be important for everybody to hear that. I think it would be important for international relations. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, this is, think of Brexit. This could actually rebuild after Brexit. Right. <laughs> hey, Julia, we, we, we wish you a lot of luck. Well, thank you so much for the advice. Um, and I'll yeah, thank you, Juliet. Yeah. Keep yeah. us posted. All right. God bless. Okay. Okay. Hey there, we're here to help the podcast now as a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash here to help pod, where we're going to have uh, unreleased calls. Unreleased calls, uh, ad free, ad free episodes, episodes, other special features, bunch of extras. So if you like the show, you want more of the show, go to patreon.com slash here to help pod. So that's it, man. Good wow. stuff. Yeah. That was great. That, that was really I think fun. that's the hardest a role play has ever sold me. Yes, agreed. that really was effective. Well, there was something different in that role play. There was no interruptions. <laughs> this is a crazy thing to say. It's a hurtful, crazy thing to say. I don't think that that's. It was really nice to hear. You know, I'll be honest. When when, when Rain pitched the role play, I, my little ego goes, "If he just brings Jake into this and not me, I don't You'll know die. what's going to happen. I don't know how I'll recover." So Gareth's bit is always, whenever we try, I try to get him quiet, he'll always find a way. No. So <laughs> no. I was literally on that last one because I'm like, "Rain set up, it's really working, it's really clean." I'm like. What's he's going to be like a janitor? <laughs> Almost had to be. I was had to bring a pastry. Yeah. Yeah. Every, I'm just stepping the janitor. Every, and then it'll literally go like, honestly, on this one, let's not. And he'll go fine. And then it'll start. Pastry boy, <laughs> I've got a bunch of them. Totally. I'm shilling a pastry. That's all that is. <laughs> totally Uber Eats. Hello. Uber Eats. Derails the thing. I'll the caller you. gets quiet. I just got hit on my bike by a vehicle. <laughs> Crikey. Um, but now. Now, really quickly, we did both go to New Trier. We went to the same high school. Yes. Oh, and shit. you moved there uh, midway through high school. You went to I, the Baha'i Temple. Yeah, correct? I, you guys I, moved there for that. Yeah. I, so I, I grew up in suburban Seattle okay. my, most of my life and then uh, moved at 16, did my last two years of high school in New Trier. Interesting. Which, for people who don't know, is a 
It's a pretty fancy school. It's a great school. Mm. It's a great school, yes. but it's fancy. Yes. There's like kids getting Porsches on their 16th birthday. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's- uh, It's also massive. It's 4,000 kids. Yeah. Huge Gigantic. theater division. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. But a great arts thing. Yes. I had a radio show at WNTA. Sure. 88.1. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother had a radio show. Yeah. Um, did you do any of the theater stuff then? I did a lot of theater. Did you That's... do Lanyap? Or were you more in the, the I did drama. some writing on Lanya, but I really went more in the in the drama department. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I did a ton of plays. I was there at the same time as Jim True. He's Jim True Frost. He was in Steppenwolf. And okay. he was on The Wire and yeah, uh, cool. stuff like that. So that's where I got my acting start yep. at New Trier. And I'm so grateful for and, it. And were you thinking of, because when I went through, uh, at least because my group was more, we were really into comedy. So we were all thinking Second City. Right. Where was your head at? So, because that school, everything is taken very seriously. Yeah. So, if you're into theater as a senior, yeah, you're thinking of pursuing this. Yeah. Yeah. So, where was your head? Because I read that you went to then Tisch for grad school. Yeah. Were you all? Were you thinking right then, like, I want to be an actor, actor, and do the New York acting thing? Well, it's interesting you say that because I've had various points in time in my career where it's like, oh, should I do the improv thing or should yes. I do the serious acting thing? And I even at New Trier, like, I remember doing some improv with one of the improv groups there, and I was like thinking of moving in that direction, but. I, I, I always went more for the serious drama thing. But I I was this nerdy, pimply, uh, skinny Seattle nerd boy. And um, and I had some success with some plays. And I in went Seattle. in. Seattle? Um, or at no, New Trier. At okay, New Trier I okay. once I moved there because I hadn't really done any acting before. And I went to Mrs. Adams, Suzanne Adams. She had probably left by the time yeah, you were there. I think so. Um, and I had, you know, one of the most important conversations of my life in all seriousness. I was like... I was so nervous and insecure and 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 uh, self conscious, and I was like, Mrs. Adams, I, I I like acting a lot, and do you think that I could ever be an actor? And she was like, Oh yes, she was very dramatic. She was like, Oh, you should try it, and you should, but you need to read books and go to college and and learn and travel the world and fall in love and, um, but. Her saying that yeah, meant totally. so much to me at being an insecure 17 year old. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, it gave me like, it lit the flame of- if I can maybe actually do this. Yeah, I might be able to, cause I didn't know any artists. I didn't know people that got paid money to Same. to make art. It didn't that, seem like a realistic it, thing. Did you, did, how much of that advice did you take? Did you travel the world? Did you do- A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like but you push, but you then in your head said like this is a real thing. This is a possibility yeah. of a path. I know, yeah. I know the exact moment because our school was just the new chair in that world. There were a lot of people with money and it felt, and there was like the old money and there was banking and lawyers. And there was a certain thing. A lot of people were going. And if you didn't fit into that, there wasn't a clear, I know exactly what I'm going to do, but there was in order to succeed here, you have to be very competitive. Mm -hmm. So once there was a, this is a real path and it could happen. Yeah. There's, that's why I think there's so many kids from that high school in this town and still working. Yeah. Because it was taken as seriously as if you wanted to like go be a lawyer. It was kind of more serious in college. Like my drama classes in high school were better and more intensive than they were a lot of my it, undergrad Where did you college. do your undergrad? I did a year at Tufts University in Boston. Then yeah. I went to University of Washington in Seattle. And the Nutrier was better, yeah. The uh, Nutrier acting classes were just more intensive, yes. like. And then you went to Tisch too. Then I ended up going. Yeah. Did you go to Tisch? I did Tisch, but I did it for dramatic writing. Oh, I had wow. a moment like you had, but it was for writing. Oh wow! Where I had a, a teacher, the same thing. I had a. I was really bad in school for a while. I dropped out for a year, came back. Yeah. Was trying to find my footing, and then I had a an English teacher, be like. You just got to see writings like jazz and you could do it. You just have to do it your way as opposed to trying to write like these other writers. Oh, just nice. make it your voice. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh. Did you go cool. straight from New Trier to, to there? Or I what? went to University of Iowa for a year. Okay. Uh, My and, wife went there. Oh, yeah. Iowa City. Really fun. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, to Tish. Okay. Yeah. And so you then did the dramatic writing and then went from there to LA? No, I did, I did a graduate acting okay. program, even though I, I wasn't. Officially, I didn't have my undergrad degree, but I had done a couple of years of undergrad. And so they let me in. And I did cool. theater for 10 years in New York, man. Wow. I, I was doing like Way. Shakespeare, bus and truck, oh, off, off Broadway. Acting, acting. I was acting, acting, acting. Because yeah. your career is so fascinating. Because I obviously, you know, I'm a big fan and I've watched you a lot, especially when we were both doing TV. Yeah. Because I feel it's so weird because 
we were on like parallel shows yes. around the same time, yes. but we never, never. I think because we're on different networks, we never bumped into each it other. Because all some... the Fox people I bumped into at some point. Yeah, yeah. But none of your guys as Yeah, world. the NBC people, yeah. we all. But how did that, because then also, I was also, I also really liked all your choices that you would do in like hiatuses, mm. where you would do like a big comedy, then you were doing, in, you were moving around a lot while having that job. Yeah. So what was, what were you doing before the office hit? Were you, had the town already kind of christened you in? Or was that it the was, one? It was a crazy story because I I really couldn't get my foot into TV and film in New York at all. I was the only actor. I was in New York for 10 years. Yeah. I didn't even have an audition wow. for any of the Law and Orders. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's the only thing. <laughs> That's the thing. That's, That's the only it. TV. Everybody, every they, New York People will be on it twice. <laughs> and, for, and for people that, yeah, I, multi, I have That's multiple right. friends that were on like three or four different times. Yeah. Just walking know? in a bagel shop going, I don't know what to tell you. I yeah. don't know the guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, he used to come around the here. Cons- I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, here's his phone number. Relax. <laughs> the constant moving and the device they pick of everybody in New York is constantly walking and talking. Yeah. yeah. You're like, just stop. Yeah. Settle down. <laughs> just, no, that law and order traffic is real. Literally two detectives. You're a bagel delivery guy. <laughs> you have time yeah. to stop. Always yeah. giving up the yeah. info. <laughs> There's always a guy stacking boxes. Always. Yeah. And he never stops stacking no, these boxes. Stuff. These are serious yeah. detectives. It, it, if it, a detective it, goes, hey, can I talk to you? We're I'm investigating go- a murder. I'm not going like well, this. Oh, yeah, the murder. You're talking about that dead woman down the <laughs> block? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm That's going. one of the main acting <laughs> classes is movement while memorizing. Because you always got to be doing some activity. And it killed me when I started. I came to I came to uh, LA around year 2000, and uh, I didn't have any TV or film credits really, and uh, I just I came with this comedy show we created uh, in New York called the New Bozina that was this kind of sketch comedy clown weird show, and we brought it, and it actually you know opened some doors. Where and were it, you doing it? Okay. We did it at little theaters around Hollywood. Okay, yeah. not, not far, not far from here. Were you doing it in New York too? We did it in New York. Yeah, I, we did it off Broadway in New York. Okay, because we were doing at that time like the surf realities and the collective unconsciousness down in the Lower East Side. Okay, so you guys were more off Broadway doing that. Yeah, okay. we were at the Cherry Lane, and Fun. we had done it over some other small theater. Cool. So, did you know the State guys at all? Did you? No, know? they were they were a generation before me. Okay, because I we we were pretty tight with them. We were around the same time. Cool. So yeah. So then you came out here with a play. But no real link in. Yeah. And then it just, the play we got, we the our little troupe signed with Three Arts Management. Should and then the same arcs. Yeah, that's they, seriously crazy. I, yeah. 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 And I then, did, I did, uh, Eric Edelson and I sold a little mm-hmm. thing, yeah. signed with Three Arts Management. Yeah, then yeah. you got agents. Yep. Then UTA. we got agents. And yeah, yeah. yeah and, uh, and then did a bunch of like guest spots and little yeah. weird films and pilots and, and stuff like that. But and I was how, having, and how I was having f- way more success in LA than I was in New York. I had the same exact thing. Which and is how crazy. Were, so I had no success in New York. And how were you feeling? Like when you were starting to do, were you feeling the build was happening? Yeah. You did. Okay. So yeah, it, it was every starting to feel year like, there was a little bit more, yes. I was making a little bit more money and getting a little bit better roles. And then it finally peaked when I got on Six Feet Under. And mm. I, I got the story. I, I love the story, which is, they kept bringing me in for six feet under and I kept not getting booked, but for tiny roles, like for like five lines here, three lines there, something like that. And I was like, damn, I really want to be on the show. It's so great. Um, Peter Krause and Michael C. Hall had also gone to NYU. I knew them. I was like, I just want to get on this show. And five times I got rejected. And then the last time I was coming in, I saw this role of Arthur, the, the mortician and and I read the character description. It was literally sitting on the t- table. I saw the character break down and it said like a nerdy, odd mortician who is like Peter Sellers Ugh. and being there. And I was like, oh my God, I could totally play that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I went to the casting person and again, I was like, hey, can I audition for this role? And she was oh, like- Oh, you really did that? Yeah. And, and she was like, oh, let me check. And then uh, she was like, yeah, yeah, come back in an hour and you can audition. And then I booked that. Mm. And that is what got me the office and got me a lot. So uh, then the people from the office saw that. Yeah, Greg Daniels from the office no saw me way. in uh, in Six Feet And had you known, the? Uh, were you a big fan of the British office before? Was I was. A, yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it must have been nerve wracking to go in for that role too because on the British office, that role is so, I mean, it's Gareth yeah. on the British office. Yeah, I was, I mean, obviously the British office is, is a total genius and we're in forever in debt, of course, but I really was like, there is no one else that can play this role better than me. See, that's it, the mental. If you get to that stage yeah. in this game, yeah, 
That's you, awesome. You so you were like, I know I could do this guy. Yeah. Because you were eating that part. So I, because re- I remember that era when it came. Did was, you audition I was for it? Ask. I don't remember. I did. You did? Yeah. I, then I probably did you too. You did? Yeah, I did. Okay, oh, yeah. then I did but too. But it was also like, it You're was an a actor? big, well, uh, not Hollywood He's a doesn't good agree. Actor. He's a good actor. <laughs> Hollywood doesn't agree. I, at some point, considered myself that. But it was a big deal. It was like yes. the office was yes. one where everyone was going well, in. Everybody, everyone... Well, everybody knew about it and yeah. everyone was going. So then if you auditioned, I did too because it was that year. I didn't remember if we were here for it or- Yeah, I was here. Uh, but I remember there was real, uh, I remember there was a real fear because I thought as a gambling man, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. You can't remake Well, they that. did a lot of those adaptations they were trying from UK it. hits. That they, did, and they vice never versa. No, yeah, a lot of them, most of them missed. But I was like, you're Coupling hitting and this? Coupling, yeah. uh, uh, Kath and Kim, I remember yep, they hit right? hard. Yep. Huge. There was a bunch of yep, them. Totally. Yeah. NBC, too. And then once you guys started, and it really was a lot of that with that cast, you were like, oh, this shit's a monster. Oh, yeah. So once it started, then you just took off. Yeah, I mean- uh, People don't remember, like, our first season, we got excoriated in the reviews. Mm-hmm. We got bad uh, numbers. And uh, we really were almost canceled. Kevin Riley, you know, fought for us. Kevin Riley was the best. And uh, really tried to keep us on the air. And we just got a little, you know, our first season was six episodes. Yeah. We did a pilot, wow. five episodes. Wow. Then we did, um, like, we got picked up for, like, five more for season two. Oh, yeah, and then, like, one crazy. more. And then, like, two more. And it wasn't really like halfway through our second season that we we were off. off. And then at that point, we were like off like a yeah, rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And crazy. then it just didn't stop. Yeah, yeah. But you're also doing, you know, I've been watching you on Instagram and stuff where you're in Antarctica and doing like, you're always making interesting choices. What was the thing when you started, obviously the environments, you know, the environment, but when was the moment that that became... Because it seems like it's not only your passion right now, yeah. but creatively, you're also putting it in front, like you're really putting what's going on with the environment front and center with your name, with your passion, with what you do, and you're physically going places. What was that turn or was that always building? Um, I mean, there's a couple of different things. I mean, I, I just feel like, and and I felt this kind of awesome responsibility when I was on the office. Like all of a sudden I have a platform. People care what I think and feel don't I have a responsibility to somehow try and make the world a better place besides just being entertaining mm-hmm. and playing goofy characters? And how do I work that? So we started this company, Soul Pancake, that went on for a long time. That was a digital media company, YouTube channel that was making inspiring content. I was started working more and more in philanthropy. My wife and I co-founded with some Haitian friends, a, a, a girls a non-pro- education nonprofit in Haiti. And... As far as climate, yeah, I mean, I was just like, the only thing I was doing for the climate was sending out occasional angry tweets. <laughs> yeah, and, totally. And then I was like, you got to do more than this rain. Come on. Like, this is, you know, you've got to put your money where your mouth is. Like, like get behind something. And I met this wonderful woman, Dr. Gail Whiteman. She ran this organization called Arctic Base Camp. And she started it and she was like... Let's go to Greenland. Let's film a thing. And we got just a, a shoestring budget. We shot this little show called An Idiot's Guide to Climate Change. And and we've been doing these. I've been working a little bit with Adam McKay and his Yellow Dot Studios and trying to kind of reach people in the movable middle around climate because too much climate is either yelling at people that will never believe the science or uh, preaching to the choir of people who are already, you know, who already it's important. So how do you make accessible, fun, funny content that reaches kids in in Nebraska that don't know what to think about climate. So, you know, I just I I just try to I try to walk the walk a That's little cool, bit. Man. And yeah. where's your head uh creatively as an actor in the state of the game and what do you like right now? What do you want to do next? Um I, I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know what I want to do next. I I uh you it's know, a weird I'm, time. What's that? It's a weird time. It is a weird time right now. Everyone says it's kind of like the deadest it's ever been. And like, also, what what is it? Yeah. Well, remember pilots. I mean, we were talking about this the other day. Pilot pilot season as a thing. Like when you when the office was auditioning, like There's you had like thirty auditions, twenty yes. auditions yeah. from January to March, big yeah. ones. Yeah. 
And then I think last year it was like there were three that actors like were, at, which is just it's just a different. Well, there also used to be a life as an actor. Yeah, you, and used, that and you used to be able being, to nickel and dime your way you, through. Well, it. you could also be a pilot actor. Yeah, mm -hmm. where you could, you could there make were, your living for you, ten years totally. just doing pilots. Every you could year. make your yeah. living doing that as a writer. You could make your living, yep. you know, writing pilots almost, and then getting an overall. Or yes. Something. Yeah. Yeah, and so then the game keeps changing. But now that, but also they don't audition as much anymore. No. Like everything is straight, straight. offers. Agreed. So there's the, they'll have a pilot. They'll look down the top seven yes. characters on yeah. the list, and they'll be like, "Let's offer this to him, and yeah. this to him, and this." But what to also him. sucks about this because I always like to try to write and make stuff. I like the indie feeling stuff. Yeah, is everybody you would like? It's a straight offer, and I go like, "I'm not looking for you to audition for me, like dance for me, but how about a meeting? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get along. Let's see yeah. if we agree creatively." Yeah, I'm like. It's like the business wants to do arranged marriages. I'm like, can't we date? Yeah, yeah. I'm interested in but maybe I'm, marriage. But I'm also really interested in the old fashioned like audition, like yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. and come into a room. Don't send in a tape. Come yeah, into yeah, a room yeah, yeah. and do the audition and work with the director. And I'm game to do yeah. that. Well, that old way. world, I do believe is so. The old. Did you guys have to test for the office in that old world where you're like you tested in person? There were all the executives in a room. How'd you guys do the, your test for that? So show? the office was different than any other pilot test I'd ever done. Because normally you're exactly right. You you waltz in in front of all these executives. So in some scary. Conference room. Yeah, it's, awful. it's all this pressure, and you got to try and be funny yes. and be mostly off book. Um, the office they shot the auditions over a weekend um, as a kind of a series of callbacks, mixing and matching. Oh, cool. Uh, mm. The actors. So stuff. It was really chemistry based. And, yeah, and and it was. And we filmed it in the documentary style, so that the oh, that's great. Oh, so the so network could see us the on the screen. That's so, way better. Yeah. I mean, well, that's anything where, where you going. had the yes. chance to actually be a little more natural, because oh. it was so unnatural the other yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. But that, I mean, that's. Yeah. That is crazy. I know, like you were saying, when you auditioned for New Girl, because yeah. you could hear the person before you. Yes. And you're just like, oh, this sucks. This oh, I have a great, I have a great story Please. about that. It wasn't me, but uh, someone I know, they were auditioning. It was between them and like a big name of a, of a former star, but a little bit past their prime. And it was between the two of them. They go in the waiting room. They bring in the, the star first to the conference room with all the executives. And there he hears laughter and applause and slaps on the back and ah, oh, and he hears him reading and all this ho, 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 ho. And he's like, he gets more and more nervous. He's oh no, this guy's gonna get the part. Oh shit. And then the, the star guy leaves, you know, I, I don't know, you know, who it was, Scott Bayo or whatever, sure. leaves and walks out. And then he goes in and he chokes and he's nervous and he's self-conscious and he and he tanks it. And the casting person calls his agent and is like, what the hell? If we the reason we were laughing like that is we had to because he had worked here before no and we way. were like had to like treat him a certain way and and yeah. and bond with him he knew the head of the network <laughs> we had no intention of casting him we were and if you had just if your client had just walked in and just read the lines the way he did last time he would have gotten the job uh, so that's the worst that if there were auditions that would be a good story to prep yourself yeah. every time yeah. <laughs> yeah but there aren't anymore yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a weird new time. I'm trying to get some some directing stuff going, writing some scripts, and and doing my thing. Thanks, bud. Thank All right. You. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. Hey everybody! Thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of this quality content. Ring, ring. Here to help. Go ahead. Cut. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>